simply that I think this wasn't very well um, prepared by the security services in Lebanon. They seem to be of court caught off guard, as was um, the U.S. Embassy itself, which is located a few kilometers out of town. You know, about 8 o'clock this morning, something like 100 protesters, mainly Palestinians, carrying flags arrived. It wasn't supposed to start until 11, so I think that gives an idea of um, the sort of uh, enthusiasm for it. But this has um, descended very quickly in the last hour or so into, into a violent scuffle. Some of those protesters were joined later by a lot of Lebanese protesters. A few managed to climb over a first perimeter wall of the embassy and then when, and that's when really um, it started to get nasty that's when at that point the police hit them with um, water cannon and, um, and then tear gas started to um, be fired in all directions and a sort of perimeter okay. of um, police and army have now surrounded this group of it looks like something like about a couple of hundred but people are coming in all the time okay and do you think Martin they're going to escalate are we going to expect more see more protests there in Lebanon I think it's inevitable here because, as you as you alluded to in your intro, you know there are something like 400,000 um, Palestinians here, and um, they are living under appalling conditions. And for many of those individuals, the dream of a Palestinian state with Jerusalem as as a capital was was something that they lived for. You Absolutely. know, and um, they are extremely poor. They are an underclass, and they've got a lot of time on their hands. And these sort of protests are relatively easy to um, to, to 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 create to create and um, organized. So I think we can expect more in the coming days. We've had a few, this is not the first one here. We've had a couple in the last few days here, smaller demonstrations. But I think the Palestinian one is certainly one that's going to gain momentum in the coming days. OK, and Martin, how does Trump's decision, you know, complicate the process of for Palestinians to return back to their homes? And, and also, given the fact that the Lebanese constitution says that Palestinian refugees cannot settle permanently in Lebanon. Yeah, that's really the, the essence of, of the, the problem of, of Palestinians here, is that they have no hope or no dream of ever acquiring equal rights in terms of jobs or acquiring property or, or anything, really, anything that a, a Lebanese citizen would, would aspire to. So um, I think um, the Trump's decision, though, in the region to, to make Jerusalem the, the, the Israeli capital is just... It's so inconceived, and it, it, it really does put back the clock decades, perhaps. I mean, perhaps, perhaps we may never in the next five years see any real hope of any talks even starting now, now that um, this decision has been made, which has been condemned right across the Arab world. I mean, even the Saudis, even the Egyptians um, and the Turks, all the big players, the real, the real partners in the region that Trump would need on board if he wanted to move ahead of the peace process have, have stood up and said this is really a really bad decision and that's that that sort of that um, impression that reaction has gone right across the, the Arab world even as far as Morocco